Hello. In this video, we are going to go through an example of calculating the frequency response uh, for a common emitter amplifier. So I have drawn a common emitter amplifier. Uh, notice that it has the input uh, from the signal source VS is being fed into the base. The output is taken out of the collector. Uh, both input and output are being fed via uh, coupling capacitors, CC1 and CC2. Uh, we have a four resistor biasing network comprised of R1, R2, RC, and RE. And then RE is partially bypassed um, with bypass capacitor CBE. Uh, another thing I've included is the RS resistor that's uh, meant to model the resistance of the signal source VS, the series resistance of the source. Um, and then I am using a, a single power supply of 20 volts. Or VCC. Uh, I have written down here uh, some assumptions that I'm going to be making in my calculations. Um, I'm assuming that Q Q1 is a an MPN transistor. I have selected a 2N3904 and then I've picked values for uh, my different components that are consistent with the selection of transistors. So a beta of 100, early voltage of 100 volts, um, input and output capacitances of 8 and 4 picofarads respectively. Now notice that uh, uh, in the case of beta, I'm not picking an extreme value out of the range that comes in the data sheet. I'm just going for uh, more of a mid-range value. And then I have drawn on the right-hand side the characteristic frequency response, in this case just the magnitude response, part of the frequency response, uh, for a common emitter amplifier or um, really any transistor amplifier where we have uh, the general shape of a bandpass filter. Um, and then we have two cutoff frequencies, a low cutoff frequency FL, a high cutoff frequency FH. Uh, the region in between those cutoff frequencies determines the bandwidth of the amplifier and it's termed the, or determine um, the mid band region. And um, normally since this is a body plot, the magnitude of the gain is gonna be expressed in dBs and that's going to be plotted versus frequency in Hertz. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is the DC analysis to determine the bias point. So one, my DC analysis. And for my DC analysis, I'm going to be using my DC equivalent circuit where I am assuming all my capacitors act as open circuits. So I'm going to assume CC1, CC2, and CBE are open circuits. All right, and so let's get started. Uh, first thing, I can see that my base voltage is the result of a voltage division between R1 and R2. Um, and so it's going to be equal to VCC times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. This is 20 volts times 20k divided by 220k plus 20k, which is approximately 1.7 volts. The voltage at the emitter is going to be 0.7 volts below that, since we have a diode drop between base and emitter. So VV minus 0.7 volts is approximately 1 volt. Um, my quiescent current IC, I can calculate as uh, my emitter voltage divided by the overall emitter resistance, RE. And the overall resistance connected to the emitter in this case is gonna be RE1 plus RE2. And the reason for that is again, I'm assuming my bypass capacitor um, is an open circuit. So this is gonna be one volt divided by um, 150 plus 1.85K. Or 0.5 milliamps. And finally, my collector voltage is going to be equal to VCC minus the voltage drop across resistor RC. So it's just going to be VCC minus ICRC or 20 minus 0.5 milli times 20k, which is 10 volts. Uh, so that's my DC analysis. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is um, perform my mid-band analysis. And so I'm going to, for the mid-band region, uh, which is the region where we are supposed to be operating 
this um, amplifier, I'm going to calculate the gain, input resistance, and output resistance. Now, for my midband analysis, I'm going to um, assume that the coupling capacitors as well as the bypass capacitor are acting as short circuits. Um, that will be the case <clears throat> for any signal uh, in the frequency range of interest. If I have designed the circuit correctly, that is. So CC1, CC2, and CVE, I'm going to assume they're short circuits. All right, um, and so first I'm going to calculate my midband gain. V midband for a common emitter amplifier is going to be minus the overall uh, collector resistance divided by the overall emitter resistance. So minus RC divided by, and the overall emitter resistance is going to be little re, the dynamic resistance of the base emitter junction, plus um, emitter resistor RE1, since RE2 in this case is being bypassed by capacitor CBE. This is minus uh, 20k divided by, now I have to calculate little re. It's one of the small signal parameters. And little re is equal to the thermal voltage divided by the quiescent collector current. Thermal voltage, assuming room temperature, around 25 millivolts. And IC, I have calculated to be 0.5 milliamps. So little re is just 50 ohms. So 50 plus 150, or 200 for the denominator, that gives me a voltage gain of negative 100. Um, the magnitude of the voltage gain is the magnitude of that number, which is 100. Now, in my um, body plot, I typically will represent my gain in terms of, um, or in dB scale, decibel scale. So I can calculate if I wanted, you know, my AB in decibel is just going to be 20 times the log base 10 of the magnitude of the gain, which is 100. And that's gonna give me 40 dBs. My input resistance will be the resistance looking into uh, the base of my circuit. And in this case, I'm not going to consider um, RS. And the reason for that is I'm going to assume that RS is the um, the serious resistance of my signal source. And so I'm going to associate it with the source and consider it part of the signal source as opposed to part of the amplifier. So I'm just going to um, calculate the input resistance of my actual amplifier, which is uh, going to be R1 in parallel with R2, since um, the reason why those resistors are connected in parallel is because I'm doing uh, my my midband analysis, my AC analysis, and so VCC is a DC source, I'm going to consider it um, to be a signal ground. And so this will be R1 going to signal ground R in parallel with R2, which is also going to ground in parallel with the resistance looking into the base of my transistor, which is by the reflection rule, beta times whatever is connected to the emitter. In this case, little re plus RE1. And so this is going to be 220k, parallel with 20k, in parallel with my beta, which was 100 times 50 plus 150. Uh, this quantity here is around 20k, which in parallel with um, 20k is equal to 10k, and that in parallel with 220k, the 10k resistance will dominate, so it's approximately equal to 10 kilo ohms. My R out is equal to RC in parallel with little o, the output resistance of the transistor, which we can also calculate. It's one of the small signal parameters and it's equal to the early voltage divided by the quiescent collector current. Early voltage in this case is 100 volts over 0.5 milliamps. So it's 200 kilo ohms. So this will be 20K. Um, in parallel with 200k, again we can see the 20k will dominate, and so this is just approximately equal to 
20 kilo ohms for my output resistance. Um, and that's it. We've completed the, uh, the DC analysis and AC analysis, or more properly called the mid-band analysis for the common emitter amplifier. Next, we're going to determine um, the values of the low cutoff frequency FL as well as the high cutoff frequency FH. Thank you.